In the late 1950s, the U.S. Navy needed a long-range fighter to defend its carrier battle groups. Primarily, the fighter was intended as a defense against long-range missiles fired from Soviet bombers and submarines. The fighter needed to have a powerful radar and a long-range missile to be able to intercept enemy bombers and missiles. The F-111B was being tested for the Navy in the Tactical Fighter Experimental Program, but it had performance issues. Due to these issues, the Navy was allowed to pursue a solution tailored to its requirements, rather than to compromise. In July 1968, the Naval Fighter Experimental Program was initiated. It was called VFX, for short. The requirement was a two-seat, twin-engine, air-to-air fighter with a max speed of Mach 2.2. It was to be armed with a built-in M61 Vulcan cannon. It should also be able to carry six AIM-54 Phoenix, or six AIM-7 Sparrow, and four AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles. McDonnell Douglas and Grumman were selected as finalists. Grumman won the contract in January 1969. The F-14 Tomcat was designed both as an air superiority fighter and a long-range naval interceptor. This enabled it to serve both as an escort attack aircraft and a fleet air defense interceptor. The variable wing design featured variable geometry wings that swung automatically during flight. For high-speed intercepts they were swept back, and for lower-speed flight they swung forward. The central air data computer controlled the position of the wings. The swept wing was intended to improve on the F-4 Phantom II's air combat performance. The flat design of the fuselage provided approximately 40 to 60 percent of the F-14's aerodynamic lifting surface. Initially, the F-14 was equipped with two Pratt and Whitney TF-30 turbofan engines, which enabled it to reach Mach 2.34. This was an engine choice that was criticized, as 28 percent of all F-14 accidents were attributed to the engines. The F-14D was fitted with General Electric F-110 engines instead. Around 25% of the f 14 structure is made of titanium. Titanium is a light and strong material. The F-14 was equipped with the Hughes AN AWG-9 X-band radar, which was able to track 24 targets simultaneously. It could also lock on to smaller targets such as cruise missiles. In the F-14D the radar was replaced with the upgraded APG-71. During the height of the Cold War, the carrier-deployed F-14s had a typical weapon loadout. This was usually two AIM-54 Phoenix, two AIM-9 Sidewinders and three AIM-7 Sparrows. Also, a full loadout of 20mm ammunition and two drop tanks were usually carried. The AIM-54 Phoenix was only fired twice by the U.S. in combat. The missiles did not score any kills. However, Iran claims that their F-14 scored dozens of kills with the Phoenix during the 1980-1988 Iran-Iraq War. The F-14 Tomcat made its combat debut during Operation Frequent Wind, the evacuation of American citizens from Saigon in 1975. F-14As from VF-1 and VF-2, operating from USS Enterprise, patrolled over South Vietnam to provide fighter cover. During the Cold War, the F-14 routinely intercepted aircraft that approached U.S. carrier groups too closely. This was often Soviet bombers and maritime reconnaissance aircraft. F-14s provided combat air patrols during Operation Fluid Drive, the evacuation of U.S. citizens from Beirut and Lebanon. Between 1982 and 1986, F-14s performed patrols and photo reconnaissance near the Lebanon coastline. In April 1980, F-14s from VF-41 and VF-84 participated in an effort to free American hostages in Iran. F-14s were involved in multiple U.S. military operations directed at Libya between 1980 and 1989. During this period, F-14s shot down four Libyan Air Force aircraft. F-14s from VF-14 and VF-32 participated in Operation Urgent Fury, the U.S. invasion of Grenada in 1983. They flew combat air patrols and reconnaissance missions, operating from USS Independence. During Operation Desert Shield in 1990, F-14s protected U.S. carrier battle groups in the Persian Gulf. Operation Desert Storm was launched in February 1991. F-14s escorted attack aircraft, defended ships and performed reconnaissance missions. The aerial engagements of the F-14 were limited during the war. 
Because of this, only one air-to-air -air kill was credited to an F-14 in the Gulf War. Both the Gulf War and the Cold War ended in 1991. The F-14 faced retirement. However, as the A-6 intruder was retired, the U.S. Navy decided to upgrade the F-14 with strike capabilities instead. After Operation Desert Storm, F-14s patrolled the no-fly zones over Iraq. In 1995 NATO launched Operation Deliberate Force, to undermine Serbian military capability in the Balkan War. During the operation, F-14s dropped laser-guided bombs in combat for the first time. In the following Operation Allied Force, F-14s dropped 350 laser-guided bombs as well as other air-to-ground ordnance. Eight F-14 squadrons participated in Operation Enduring Freedom over Afghanistan, after the 9-11 attacks. They mainly flew ground support, and reconnaissance missions and dropped more than 605,000 kilograms of ordnance on targets. Operation Iraqi Freedom was the last combat operation for the F-14. In 2006 the F-14 Tomcat was retired from U.S. service. Before the Islamic Revolution, Iran purchased 80 F-14As, as well as AIM-54 Phoenix missiles. It is believed many of the Iranian F-14s were sabotaged, by either the Americans or Iranians loyal to the Shah. The United States estimated that Iran was able to keep between 15 and 20 F-14s operational. The F-14 served in the Iran-Iraq War between 1980 and 1988, and likely shot down at least 160 Iraqi aircraft. On January 26, 2012, an Iranian F-14 crashed three minutes after takeoff. Both crew members were killed. In November 2015, Iranian F-14s were reported flying escort for Russian 295 bombers, on airstrikes in Syria against the Islamic State. When the U.S. retired their F-14s, they made sure all aircraft were destroyed, and spare parts were suspended. This was done so Iran would not be able to obtain any spare parts. In total, 712 F-14 Tomcats were produced.